throughout your life, you probably have had an experience of immense regret. And I'm not talking about something trivial like regretting going to the movies with others. I'm talking about a regret so momentous that you get all existential about it. Realizing that death would bring an end to these opportunities that you've been missing. Here's a classic example. Back in high school, I had absolutely no game. My romantic life was pretty much obsolete. You see, I'd have a crush on someone, set out this game plan for talking to them, but then when the time came and we were in class together, my anxiety would get the best of me and I would chicken out. Then I'd think to myself, I'm gonna die alone. I'm gonna run out of these chances because I'm gonna die and I'll never experience any romantic success. Maybe that's why you start fearing death. Or maybe you're just having one of those nights, you know? You're alone, stuck with your thoughts, and you just can't get the idea of death out of your head. It's the end to everything, the infinite void of nothingness that awaits us. Obviously, the death we're going to be talking about in this video doesn't assume an afterlife or anything, by the way. Now, assuming we accept the idea that it'd be preferable not to live in fear of death, what arguments can we think of against that fear of death? For an answer, I've decided to turn to the Roman poet and Epicurean philosopher, Titus Lucretius Carus, or Lucretius for short. As far as I could tell, there's only one work attached to his name, the De Rerum Natura in Latin, otherwise known as On the Nature of Things, or On the Nature of the Universe. For transparency's sake, I'll be using the Ronald Melville translation as shown here. Now without further ado, let's see if Lucretius can provide some arguments as to why we shouldn't fear death. Hello friends and welcome back to Amygdala Vid, your favorite channel that you don't have to take too seriously. Now there's three big points that I feel are worth discussing that Lucretius brings up to combat our fear of death. The first point is in regards to the time before birth, and the second two points relate to the lack of sensation that comes with death. So let's start with the first and probably most famous point. So I gotta ask you guys something, and I know it's a little personal, but come on. We've been with each other for so long that I just gotta know. What was your time before birth like? Chances are, unless you're a Scientologist, you don't believe that you actually have access to that before life. Assuming that such a thing even exists. I mean, think really hard for me. Can you remember anything at all from the time before you were born? Probably not. It seems like we can't access those hypothetical times in our memory. You will easily believe that the same seeds of which we are now made have often before been placed in positions they are now in, but memory cannot recall it, since in between a great gulf is fixed, a halt of life, and all the wandering motions have been scattered far from things we know. So this quote, as beautiful as it is, is kinda muddled with Epicurean physics. But besides that, it's true. We don't seem to have any memory of this before life state. And how can we anguish over something that we don't have memory of? Makes sense so far, but isn't death pretty darn similar to this before life state? I mean think about it, before life I'm assuming it'd be pretty similar to that void sensation that death would bring us, and yet I don't seem to mind that pre-life existence. So why should I fear or mind death if it brings the same? Lucretius even goes farther and is like, what if there's a life similar to this after our death? Then if it's anything like this, we won't remember this current life, therefore why fear its end? No more again, if time should after death collect our matter and bring it back, and if the lights of life were given back to us, would that concern us, not one whit, when once our memory of ourselves has passed away. And nothing now comes back to us from that self that was before, nor from it now can fear or anguish ever touch us. So practically, if you're ever feeling fearful of death, just try to think about what it was like before you were born. You didn't seem to mind it then, so why do you think you'd mind it in the future? And with that, we can move on to two of Lucretius's other points that focus more on the lack of sensation. If I were to ask you why you're afraid of death, assuming it'd be a nice peaceful death, you might reply with an appeal to the joys of life. Aw oh man, if I died, I wouldn't be able to eat Krispy Kreme donuts or travel the world or... Well, this is a little embarrassing, but... I'd miss being able to f***ing get laid. I understand, I understand. We have these desires in life and when they're fulfilled, we feel pretty good, don't we? But let's see how Lucretius would respond. Men lie at a table, goblets in their hands and garlands on their brows. And in their hearts they say, short is the joy of men. Too soon it is gone and none can e'er recall it. As if in death their chief trouble will be parching thirst or burning drought. 
or a desire for something that they crave and cannot get. But this they do not add. That desire of things like these hangs over you no more, which if their minds could truly see and words follow, why? Then from great distress and fear they'd free themselves. So look, I get it. When you're alive, you got desires. But with death, we don't think about the absence of desires so much as the absence of the objects of our desires. Big difference there. It sounds like common sense, yeah, that we won't be desiring once we die, but it's easy to forget this because we're currently alive and full of desire. So perhaps then, just reminding yourself of this would be useful if you ever find yourself in a fear of death session. Lastly, if those first two points didn't help you and you still feel afraid, Lucretius wants to offer a comparison of death to sleep. Then we must ask, what bitterness is this, if all things end in sleep and quiet, that a man can waste away in ceaseless grief? For no one feels the want of himself and his life when mind and body alike are quiet in sleep. For we all care that sleep might have no end. Free from all yearning for ourselves, we lie. And yet when a man springs up, startled from sleep and pulls himself together, through our limbs those first beginnings are never far away from the sense-giving motions of the body. So this point asks us to reflect on what it's like to be asleep. It does feel like nothing, like I don't even exist, and it doesn't seem like I have a problem with it. There is an objection to be made though because some nights I'm experiencing dreams. And I don't know about you, but I'm always super involved in the dreams. Back in high school when my mom would try and wake me up, I'd tell her that I want to finish this dream first, and that's why I was a C student. But really, those times where I don't seem to be experiencing a dream, it is kind of like life's free trial of death. If anything, I love taking naps and sleeping, so why should I fear death if it's going to be similar? And with that, we've covered three points Lucretius brings up against fearing death. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Our video on Thomas Nagel's opinion on death actually counters Lucretius's, so tell me which perspective you prefer. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, but if you did not enjoy the video, then go watch someone better like one of these guys. If you want to be the first ones notified when I drop another video, then hit the bell and the subscribe button. And as always, I wish you all a beautiful rest of your day.